there's always a bit of theatrics in politics. Here, the FDP's main players are putting on a show. Incumbent party chairman Guido Vestavella and his designated successor, Philippe Rusla, ahead of the upcoming party conference. Each represents a different character in this scene. Rusla is the one willing to compromise. Vestavella hopes to retain his influence, even after stepping down as party leader. Many fellow FDP members fear that Vestavella will try to cling to power. Nothing could be worse than having a new party leader, Philip Rusla, and a de facto acting one, Guido Vestavella. But I think Vestavella is too smart for that. The FDP's anti-Vestavella faction wants him to stay out of domestic politics and concentrate on his job as foreign minister. But Vestavella has been less than convincing in that role. The post that usually earns its holder a boost in popularity has brought him little luck. And his problems at home have been noted on the international stage. Symbolism and perception of a politician are part of the business of international politics. Of course, the people who encounter Guido Vestavella on an international level know that this minister is under a lot of domestic pressure and that he may not have as much clout as he appears to. That affects his influence in international politics. And that goes for his influence at home as well. Vestavella appears to be banned from the Chancellor's inner circle. Now he's just one minister among many. An initiative on nuclear disarmament was just one of his unsuccessful foreign policy ventures. Many in the FDP hope he can find the strength to turn that around, but they're not very optimistic. If he continues to fall short as foreign minister, the party will bear the brunt of it. Vestavella will be identified with the FDP even after stepping down as party leader. So any mistakes he makes in his office will be blamed on the FDP too. That's what people in the party are afraid of. But Vestavella is not the FDP's only worry. Everyone in the party wants a new beginning, but it's unclear who will bring it about. For instance, the question of the deputy party chiefs. The power struggle that's broken out over the three available posts is distracting attention from other issues. The most important thing is to find substantive answers. We can't answer questions about credibility by just introducing new heads. We have to find real answers. That's what counts today. It's hoped that Philipp Rösler will revive the FDP's flagging fortunes, but he's not saying how. There's just a vague sense that there will be changes and that more issues need to be addressed. But even his supporters can only say that things have to get better. But how? We have to make a fresh start, a real fresh start. And that's why it's important for Philip Rösler to select the team that's going to support him. In soccer language, I'd say he has to hit the back of the net. But no one seems to be making the move. Since it was trounced in recent regional elections, the FDP is in shock. So it was left to General Secretary Christian Lindner to announce that no personnel decisions would be made until the upcoming party conference. He says that's normal. It's odd that Rösler's period in office, which hasn't even begun yet, is already being weighed in the balance. I can only say that the decisions are going to be made at the party conference in Rostock, not before. That will be the signal for the FDP to get back on the offensive. But all eyes are already on Philipp Rösler. Will he be able to pick the people and the themes that will convince voters? That is what will decide whether or not the FDP can make the successful comeback its members are calling for.